It is 12 o'clock. You may now commence your deep learning exam. You have one hour. What's happening guys? My name is Nicholas Renault and in this video, we're going to be running through TensorFlow in 10 minutes. Let's take a deeper look as to what we're going to be going through. So super quickly, what is TensorFlow? Well, TensorFlow is a flexible and open source library that allows us to build deep learning models. It was originally built by the Google Brain team in 2015. And the reason why a lot of data scientists tend to use TensorFlow is that it makes building deep learning models a whole heap easier, faster, and more reproducible. So let's take a look as to what we're going to be covering in this video. So first up, we're going to be smashing through this. So we're going to build a TensorFlow churn model, then we're going to train it, predict, and last but not least, we're going to be able to save that model and reload it from memory so that we can use it later on. Ready to do it? Let's get to it. Alrighty, so in order to run through TensorFlow in 10 minutes, we're going to be speeding through this, but there's five key things that we need to go through. So first up, what we're going to be doing is importing some data and I've got some pre-written code here. Now, all of this code is going to be available inside of a Jupyter Notebook in the description below via GitHub. So by all means, do check that out if you want to reproduce this. So once we've imported some data, we're then going to import our dependencies. We're going to build and compile a model. We're then going to fit and predict our model. So this is also known as training. And then last but not least, we're going to save our model down to memory so that we can reload it and use it later on down the track. Now, first up, let's quickly start with our data. So the data set that we're going to be using is a churn data set. So there's a whole bunch of feature columns here. So if we go all the way out, these are our feature columns, so all of these. And then the last column, which is going to be our target or our Y variable is going to be this churn column here. So what we're actually going to be doing is using TensorFlow to predict whether or not a customer is likely to churn. So yes or no. So if it's yes, then that means they have churned. If it's no, it means they haven't churned. So let's dive right into it. So the first thing that we're going to do is import our data. Now we're just going to be using standard pandas and do a little bit of pre-processing here. This isn't a full data science workflow. We're just going to be going through TensorFlow as a focus. So I'm going to bring in our data and this is going to read in our data, create an X and a Y variable. And then we're going to create a train test split using the train test split function from scikit-learn. And this will give us an X train data frame, which we're going to use to train our TensorFlow model and a Y train data frame. So we'll also have a X test and a Y test component. All right, onto the TensorFlow bit. So the first thing that we need to do is import our dependency. So let's go on ahead and do that. All right, so those are our dependencies imported. So we've written three lines of code there. So the first one is from tensorflow.keras.models import sequential. So this sequential model is going to be our core model class. Then we've also imported load model. So this is going to allow us to reload our model from memory later on. The next line that we've written is from tensorflow.keras.layers import dense. So dense is going to be a fully connected layer inside of our neural network. So it's going to allow us to build a whole bunch of hidden layers. Then the last thing that we've imported is from sklearn.metrics import accuracy score. So our accuracy score is going to be the metric that we use to evaluate how well our model is performing. So that's our dependencies imported. Now, the next thing that we need to do is actually build up and compile our model. So we're going to use the sequential class to do this and add a bunch of dense layers. So let's go on ahead and do that. Alrighty, so that's our model built. So we've written four lines of code there. So the first one is model equals sequential. So this is instantiating our sequential class. Then what we're doing is we're adding a bunch of layers to our neural network. So whenever you hear somebody talking about hidden layers, this is the step that we're actually setting up here. So in this case, we've added two hidden layers. So a dense fully connected layer here and another dense fully connected layer here. So if we actually step into this, in order to do that, we've written model.add and then we've written dense. So this is using our dense layer that we imported up here. Then we've passed through a couple of keyword parameters. So units equals 32. So this means that we're going to have 32 neurons inside of this dense layer. And then we've also specified an activation function. So in this case, our activation function 
acts as a modifier to the output from our neural network. So say, for example, you pass through a whole bunch of numbers and you didn't pass through an activation function. Well, what you're going to do is get the raw output from that neuron. By passing through a ReLU activation function, you're converting the output to a minimum of zero and then an unlimited upward value. So it basically looks like a hockey stick. Then the next keyword parameter that we've passed through is input underscore dim. And then to that, we've set it as the length of our X train data frame. So this basically specifies that our input dim is going to be the same number of dimensions that are available inside of our feature data frame. Then we've specified another hidden layer. So this particular dense layer is going to have 64 neurons. And again, it's going to have an activation of ReLU. And then the last one that we've specified is again, model.add dense. This one's going to have one output. So remember, we only want to predict one or zero, yes or no, true or false. And in this case, really what we're trying to do is predict yes or no, whether or not a client has churned. And then we specified our activation as sigmoid. So this is going to take the output of our previous layer and the output of this layer and convert it to a value between one or zero. So one representing yes, they have churned, zero representing no, they haven't churned. Now, the next thing that we need to do is compile our model. So let's do it. Alrighty, that's our model compiled. So when we compile our model, what we're basically doing is we're telling TensorFlow how we want to train our model, what loss metrics we want to use, what optimizer we want to use, and what metrics we want to focus on. So in order to compile our model, we've written model.compile, and then we've passed through three keyword parameters. Loss equals binary underscore cross entropy, optimizer equals SGD, and metrics equals accuracy. So the best way to explain this is think about a game of Battleship. So our loss is basically the sum of how far our estimations are from sinking a battleship. Our optimizer is how we choose to search through and find those battleships. So basically, we might choose to use a grid pattern. We might choose to use a random search. Basically, our optimizer is getting us closer to our end outcome and ideally helping us reduce our loss. And then our metrics allow us to evaluate how well our model is performing. All right, now that that's done, the next thing that we need to do is fit and predict our model. So let's go and do it. Alrighty, so that's our model fitting or training. So in order to train our model, we've written model.fit and then we've passed through our X train data frame. So remember, this is our training data frame and we've also passed through Y trains. So this is our X variable and our Y variable, also known as our features and our target. Then we've specified how long we want to train for. So we've specified our epochs and we've set that to 200. So you can play around with this. And then we've also specified our batch size. So how large of a batch we want to pass through to TensorFlow before actually making an update. So let's let that finish training and then we'll be able to make some predictions. Alrighty, and that's our model finished training. So ideally what you wanna see when you're training is that your loss is reducing and ideally your accuracy is increasing. So you can see that we started up right up here with an accuracy of about 0.5. And if we scroll all the way down, we're now at 0.42. So we could probably train this for longer, but in this case, we're running through it pretty quickly. So this is our model now fit. Now that that's done, we can actually go on ahead and make a prediction. So if we add a new cell, let's go and do that. Alrighty, and those are our predictions done. So to run a prediction, we've just written model.predict, and then we've passed through our X test data frame. And we've stored this in a variable called Y hat. Now, the thing is, when you get your result out of TensorFlow, it's going to be a continuous value between zero and one. So what we want to do is convert this to a binary outcome, so zero or one. So what we've done in the next line is written a list comprehension here. So what we're basically doing is setting our output or our outcome to zero if the value is less than 0 0.5 or one if it's above that. So it's the opposite side of it. So in this case, now we can take a look at our predictions by typing in y hat. And you can see we've got a whole bunch of zeros and a whole bunch of ones. And we can also calculate our accuracy score. So let's take a look. And there you go. So we've now gone and calculated our accuracy score. So to do that, we've used the accuracy score method, which we imported from scikit-learn up here. And to that, we've passed through y test and y hat. Now, in this case, our accuracy isn't all that great. So 60% or 0.59% isn't all that great. So this is an indication that you might want to train longer. You might want to use some regularization, might want to do some additional pre-processing on your data. Now, the last thing that we want to do with TensorFlow is save our model and be able to reload it from memory later on. So let's go and save our model. 
Alrighty, so that's our model saved. So in order to save our TensorFlow model, all we need to do is write model.save and then pass through the name of the folder that we want to save it into. So if I actually scroll over now, inside of the folder that we've got our Jupyter Notebook, I've now got this TF model folder, which includes all of our saved model files. Now, if we wanted to reload it back into memory, we can delete our model, right? So now it's effectively deleted from memory inside of our Jupyter Notebook. So if I actually went and ran a prediction, you can see that it's no longer there. So in order to reload it, we just use the load model function that we imported up here from our tensorflow.keras.models class. So let's go on ahead and load our model. And there you go. So we've now gone and reloaded our model. So we've created a variable called model, and then we've used our load model method and passed through the name of our saved model folder. So again, it's going to be this. You can name it whatever you'd like. Now, if we go and run a prediction again, just to make sure it is working, you can see that no errors. And again, we're getting predictions. So that's TensorFlow in a nutshell. So basically what we did is we imported our dependencies. We built and compiled our model with a number of differing hidden layers. Then we went and fit our model using the model.fit method. And then last but not least, we went and saved our model using model.save and reloaded it using load model. And that about wraps it up. Thanks again for tuning in guys. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up hit subscribe and tick that bell so you get notified of when I release future videos. And let me know what you're going to be using TensorFlow to build. Thanks again for tuning in. Peace.